So it becomes this chicken and egg issue. All right? Is it because you have the genes and you had environmental exposure to gluten that you develop celiac disease? Or is it because you had the genes and you had mercury toxicity and you had post-traumatic stress syndrome and you had fill in the blank from the other stuff we've been talking about that now you develop autoimmune disease? We don't know the answers to that. But we do know that there are predisposing factors, so let's take them out. Let's address them. Let's treat them. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the autoimmune thyroid has come essentially in two forms, Graves' disease and Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune disease in which the antibodies slowly but gradually destroy the thyroid gland. The signs and symptoms of Hashimoto's are weight gain, because you end up with a hypothyroid picture, uh, fatigue, uh, migraines, constipation, menstrual disorders, uh, depression, you can have anxiety and tachycardia, uh, sensitivity to cold, okay, elevated cholesterol. With Graves' disease, it's an autoimmune that produces an overproduction of uh, thyroid. You get these people then with the bulging eyes, and then you can have weight loss, fatigue, uh, rapid heart rate, uh, the thyroid enlarges significantly, goiter, uh, and again you have menstrual syndromes and insomnia. And if we look specifically at hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism means that the thyroid is underproducing the amount of thyroid, T3 and T4, that is necessary um, for the system to function. Thyroid has a huge amount of activity throughout the entire body. You need thyroid to live. All right. The signs and symptoms that go along with hypothyroidism, fatigue, constipation, muscle aches, you can get a hoarse voice, very throaty voice, sluggishness, weight gain, menstrual irregularities, again, this internal sensitivity to cold, and again, elevated cholesterol. And how many people get their thyroid tested when they have elevated cholesterol? We get focused on the cholesterol and don't think what else might be contributing. Hyperthyroidism is a condition in which the thyroid gland is producing much too much of the thyroid hormone. And then <clears throat> with this kind of a problem, it accelerates the body's metabolism. You get weight loss. You get difficulty sleeping again. You can get migraines. Again, it can be constipation, although you can also have diarrhea. You get increased appetite, nervousness, um, sensitivity to heat. You're feeling hot all the time, tremor. And then the enlarged thyroid. Treatment options in terms of thyroid, the conventional uh, people will tell you that Synthroid is all that's necessary. Uh, my clinical experience disagrees with that. Uh, Synthroid is pure T4. Uh, my experience has been that treating people with uh, armor thyroid or some form of armor thyroid, nature thyroid, which is a mix of T3 and T4, I get better results with people. Cytomel is a pure T3. You can utilize that in combination with Synthroid in order to get uh, the results that you want, you do have to be careful with pure T3 because it can put you into a hyperthyroid state. So thyroid, when taken, the other thing about thyroid is you need to be very careful when you take it. There's lots of things that interfere with the absorption of thyroid, so you need to take thyroid on an empty stomach at least 45 minutes away from food. One other thing, just to make things a little bit more confusing, is the, we need to be looking again at a global picture. One of the other things we look at is cortisol production. Addison's disease is actually the most common autoimmune disease associated with celiac disease, which is an adrenal dysfunction. So looking at what's going on with the production of cortisol in your body and whether or not it's adequate, inadequate, or you have a primary uh, adrenal deficiency uh, happening. And people who have been sick for extended periods of time frequently have uh, significant suppression of uh, adrenal output. And there are things that we can do uh, nutritionally, things we can do with meditation, uh, in order to help restore normal adrenal function. Adequate sleep is key in order to help restore normal adrenal function.